Welcome back to Wolf Guitars and Gear. Today we're going to be talking about something that's been going around YouTube for a little bit, and that, my friends, is string choice. So today we're going to be talking about what strings are right for you. Now maybe you've seen some of the episodes that have been put out recently by Rick Beato and Rhett Shaw and Daryl Braun. Uh, each of their channels has had a recent episode on string gauge and how that impacts your sound. Um, I watched them, I found them uh, pretty interesting. Uh, some of the points that uh, Daryl Braun made that I thought were really good uh, to review would be uh, the way that your playing style affects the string gauge that's going to be right for you. Uh, now, as a perfect example of that, back in my earlier days when I was playing uh, a lot of heavier metal music and some, some punk stuff, uh, you know, it wasn't the, the shreddy metal of the 80s type of stuff. It was, it was very rhythm centric, so I, I played very heavy handed and we were playing with detuned guitars. And so for that, uh, my favorite was to go with the GHS 11s. And uh, I was playing that on a Les Paul and that seemed to be a really good uh, fit. At one point I even had a seven string set on there where I had the low string from the seven string set as my low E on that because we were tuned down and it actually had so much girth that it, it really sounded good and I really liked that. But um, you know, what you like is, I think is gonna be very dependent on that. Just the feel that you have as you play uh, your guitar, if you have a very light touch you're probably not going to want those those huge heavy strings probably something more like eights or nines will probably going to be right for you but if like i said if you play really heavy and you're you know you're just really chugging and, and really playing really heavy handed you you may want some thicker strings especially if you're playing detuned so i think that uh, daryl ron made some excellent points there uh rick beato's video made some really good points too uh because uh he was demonstrating how there is a difference in the timbre of the strings between 11s, 10s, 9s, and 8s. And what he did was to run several different uh, clips of, of a riff and they changed the strings. And that was the only variable that they changed was the strings. And you could hear how that did affect the EQ of the, of the overall recording that they did. And I think that a huge part of that that he didn't address in that and that uh, Daryl Braun and Rhett Shaw did not address in their videos on this as well is the fact of the mass of the metal of the string and how that interacts with the magnetic field of the pickup. Uh, since that is how the electric guitar generates its signal, it just stands to reason that the more metal that you're vibrating is gonna create a louder signal and that's uh, gonna account for the way that some frequencies are going to push through louder than others, depending on your string gauge. And so that I think is very key. Um, so again, going back to the Daryl Braun video, he uh, was kind of more of the opinion that really it just uh, amounts to which feel you prefer for strings, that it really doesn't matter other than that. And to some degree he's correct that if you really want to change the way that your guitar sounds, that the right way to do that is through EQing your amp uh, he recommended even going to a different amp if you didn't like the way your guitar sounds. I think that's perhaps a little extreme. For myself, I would personally, like I said, try the things that are low cost first. Try EQing the amp you have differently. Um, one of the things you could definitely do is to employ what's referred to as subtractive EQing. Instead of trying to add more bass or add more mids or treble, whichever the case may be, that you find uh, the frequency range lacking in what you're looking for, uh, perhaps what you do is you take something away. For instance, let's say you start with your amplifier flat, and then you decide that you want to increase the mid and the treble frequencies. Rather than rolling those knobs up, you could achieve the same function by rolling your bass knob down and then simply increasing your volume. Uh, which also brings up another point there with regards to the headroom of the amp, but we're not gonna get into all of that today. Uh, but just suffice it to say that you can achieve the same effect sometimes by rolling off one set of frequencies rather than turning up another one uh, to get a different effect. 
And so that's just a thought process that may be counterintuitive, but I think it can be very helpful in trying to find the right sound that you're looking for. Also, before you resort to buying a new amp, I think it's crucial that you examine the pickups that you're using because really outside of your amp, well, perhaps even more importantly than your amp, I think your pickup choice is going to have the greatest impact on what your guitar sounds like. If you have humbuckers in your car, it, guitar, it's not going to sound like a single coil guitar and vice versa. And so really knowing and being familiar with the sonic characteristics of the pickups that are in your guitar and also uh, what that would mean towards the type of sound that you're trying to achieve, I think is crucial to getting the end result that you're looking for. So again, just to uh, recap, I think that you need to consider your playing style, uh, what sort of tuning you're going to be in. I think you need to uh, consider the pickup choice that you're going to be having in your guitar. And I think you need to work with the EQ on your amp. And some of this is all going to be trial and error. So again, start with the low cost things. It doesn't cost anything to turn knobs on your guitar. It doesn't cost a whole lot to try a couple different string gauges to see what feels good to you. Uh, from there, the next step would be your pickups. Uh, they can be a rather low cost way to change your sound. And uh, if all else fails, if you finally find that you really absolutely have to have another amp, well, you're probably talking several hundred dollars at that point. So that would be my last resort rather than my first as Daryl Braun had suggested. So that's where I differ from them on a couple of those points. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite string gauge is and what, what strings are your favorite. And we can discuss that. I love interacting with my viewers, so please don't hesitate to interact. And uh, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get all future episodes. And uh, we'll see you next week here on Wolf Guitars and Gear.